Do you want to go to Mars? Would you change your answer if it was forever? Hey guys, I'm Trace and thanks for tuning in to D News. That's right, this could be the end of your Earthbound existence if you choose to go to Mars with a company called Mars One. The nonprofit has plans to send humans to the red planet by 2023. The catch is, if you go to Mars with them, you're never coming back. Mars is cold, it's dry, it's rocky, it's inhospitable. There's no Starbucks and there's no internet. You pretty much spend your days working for the betterment of mankind and you know, that might pay well, but even if it did, where would you go spend the money? Not to mention the eight years of astronaut training you'd have to go through before they even let you on the spaceship. But let me clarify, this isn't like a one-way suicide mission, this is a one-way build a home on Mars mission. They are looking to make humans multi-planetary species. Mars One says that they'll have a base established on the surface before the first human even gets there and then they'll send new equipment regularly and new humans every two years. <laughs> One way isn't that crazy really. Europeans were doing it centuries ago when they were here colonizing the new world. They weren't playing some like oceanic hopscotch going back and forth. Oh let's go to America for the weekend chaps. <laughs> Plus not coming back saves like 80% in resources and money. So what could go wrong? Radiation? Licked. NASA proved that Mars atmosphere blocks it. Food. Plans vary, but if we send two years worth of supplies, along with equipment to build a transparent dome, you could grow earth crops in the Martian soil before your resources run out. I wonder if the plants would change color. Now the big one cost. Elon Musk of SpaceX said that a reasonable colony should cost between 0.25 and 0.5 of the nation's gross domestic product. If we look at the US, that would mean about 36 billion dollars, which may sound like a lot, but we've spent more than that on government contracts already in 2013. We're 11 days in. The more realistic issue isn't cost or food or anything like that, it's a health problem psychologically and physically. It takes 250-ish days to get to Mars, and during that time you're isolated in the vacuum of space in a really small capsule with the other astronauts and after a while you start to get agitated and you're sleeping a lot and you just get annoyed by almost everything and just <laughs> It's not unlike going on a car trip with your family. Another big problem is HZEs, or high energy, high mass particles that are produced by supernovas. The vacuum of space isn't really a vacuum. These things are flying out there everywhere and without an atmosphere to block them, they'll fly right through your gray matter and they can really mess you up, like triggering Alzheimer's mess you up. If the crushing psychological problems and loneliness, the one way trip and the long training don't deter you, then you should go sign up, but before you do, know that Mars One has some characteristics that they value in their astronauts. We pulled these from the FAQ on the Mars One website. Mars One values these five characteristics. Adaptability, resiliency, curiosity, the ability to trust, and creativity slash resourcefulness. Now that is two more characteristics in one, but we'll let it slide. But if you don't like their criteria, there are other companies that are going to go to Mars in the next 10 to 20 years, so you could always sign up with one of them. What is the first thing you would do when you hopped out of that spaceship after 250 days? I can tell you what I would do. I'd probably give it a nice little stretch. I'm gonna bend. Subscribe to D News and let us know your story down in the comments. And just think, 10 years from now, we could look up at the red planet and there might be humans living there. That is so neat. Hey, thanks for watching D News, everybody.